Are gonna get some work done today? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Oh, wow. Here's the light I just took off. Here's the reverse backup light. Look at all that sand in there. I mean, it's just, it's just packed and caked in there. This side doesn't look much better. Not too bad. Are you working? Yes, you are. You're so cute. No, you stay away from that. You can't have that. All right, so removing the rear valance revealed that this support section, whatever it is, because I don't know the name of it, most likely needs needs replaced. I don't think I may be able to make a patch and connect this stuff up if I can find some solid metal um, to weld to and stuff and I wouldn't be opposed to that since all of this will be hidden but um, I should probably figure out what the name of this thing is and find out what it costs uh, to replace the part. So since I don't know the name of it we're gonna go to Facebook group and post a question with a pic, and we will probably get an answer within minutes. All right, so I snapped a pic, made a post, said I'm looking for some help. What is the name of this rear support section on a 65 Mustang? It's looking like I may need to replace the entire piece. Thanks. And we will hit post and wait for an answer. And just like that, thank you, Brian. He let me know this is a rear truck brace. So now I can look that up on CJ Pony Parts or wherever and find out what I'm looking at to replace that section of steel. So to you newbies out there like me, um, joining Facebook groups, incredibly helpful. Very, very helpful. Moving on. Well, this has all been sanded down pretty good. And here's what we have. Middle stuff, very solid, very good. Um, a little bit of pitting, but it's still pretty strong as far as the brace is concerned. Obviously this area here is uh, rusting through. You get over to here, there's still original paint. Um, this is all very strong so the weak section as far as the driver's side of the car goes is pretty much from here to here so I mean I think I could weld in a patch for this if I want it now we come over to the passenger side and that is a different story um, you have pretty good metal here I think that I could weld to um, this is all the weak stuff but as far as this side over here goes, I'm not sure. There's a whole lot for me to work with in here. Well, before we move any further with this, I've got really strong winds coming through down the valley. My house sits at the end of a valley. So that means if I crack the garage door open and this window open, I can do all the sanding I want underneath here and all that dust is gonna get sucked out of here. So if I uh, open those curtains. So we're gonna sand down all this stuff and assess the damage everywhere else.
All right, I got the entire underside of the car taken care of. Let me show you how I made out. Now I didn't bother sanding these panel extensions because I am most likely going to be replacing these, but I wanted to get in up underneath all of here, get the frame rails taken care of. Um, the entire underside of the car has been wire brushed up to where the floor pans drop down. And I am incredibly fortunate. The rails all look really good. Um, I've any spots that I felt looked um, suspicious, I hit with a hammer and everything seemed solid. I don't think there's any reason to worry about any of this. Up in here is where my leaf springs attach. Everything looks very solid in here. All that being said, I will be going over this one more time and degreasing it and everything underneath here is going to get coated in the POR 15. But before I do the coating in the POR 15, there are a few spots I have to address. One of them being right here. <clears throat> the trunk is coming through, so I'm gonna have to cut this section out and weld in a new section of trunk. And I'll just, my plan is to make this piece out of metal and weld that in. And there's one other spot I found where the trunk is rusting through. After we do that, we're gonna turn our attention to the back rail here. So I think this is episode 35. So finally, episode 35, I will begin tackling some metal fabrication. So let's see if I can't make a little patch panel to repair these holes in this trunk here. I think I can handle it, but we'll see, who knows. First thing I'm gonna do is strip this area down. Strip it down. Find out just how bad this rust is. All right, so here's the extent of the damage. Um, let me shine the light underneath here for, well, there you guys can see all of the rust holes. So the reason I have it taped off um, all the way out here obviously is because a lot of this metal in here is still weak on the other side and it, it's all pretty solid once we get over here. So what I plan on doing is cutting this section out and re repairing this area. and. <clears throat> to keep things simple, and since this is my first uh, fabrication project on the car, my intentions are to cut a piece out of sheet metal to fit this shape, uh, have a piece to fit this shape, a piece to fit this shape, and a piece to fit this shape, lay them in, and then tack them together. So I kind of form the shape like that. Then I will try to build up all the edges with weld, and hopefully that gives me a decent patch panel to lay in here that I can then grind down. So as I think about this, I think the first thing I'm gonna do before I drill out these spot welds is actually make a cardboard template of each section I plan on cutting out and welding in. Since um, this is, at this point, it is gonna be the most accurate with making this. I feel like if I cut this out and then try to make the templates, um, it could be more difficult. So, I'm just going to use some um, uh, cardboard from a cereal box and start making these shapes. All right, so just like that, that took probably 10 minutes. I have all the sections laid out that I will need to cut to start welding together. I deliberately left this one long and this one a little longer because this is a rounded corner and I'm not sure how much weld I'm gonna to have to build up and how much material I need to work with in here. So I'd rather play that safe, leave these things longer and figure that out once I get to shaping this out.
All right, so obviously that's my first time ever trying to drill through spot welds. So as you can see, uh, I need a little practice with that yet, but hey, we'll improve as we go. Ooh, that feels much better. All right, so I still have good reference points here and I can figure this out. All right. I've had the night to sleep on this, and I'm slightly changing my plan again. I think to build this section here with the pieces I cut out, it would be helpful to have this section repaired so that I can make sure all of this interacts correctly. And in looking at this piece, and this is the piece that I talked about um, possibly buying and replacing, it is fairly simple. So I'm thinking I'm at least going to try fabricating this section and extending it out over to here so that I can at least finish this repair and then I can deal with this half over here later. Well, welcome back. Unfortunately, my camera broke and now I'm filming with my phone, but I wanted to show you where I'm at. I'm gonna attempt to make this piece, run it over to here and get that welded up and then I can finish my uh, trunk repair here and make sure that these two pieces then line up correctly. All right, so this is the old piece I need to replicate and I took all the measurements off of it. It's a reasonably simple piece. Transferred them over to here and what I'm actually gonna do um, to make bending this a little bit easier, this might be a mistake but I'll figure it out as I go is I'm going to lightly score um, the lines depending on which way I have to bend it on the underside or the top side. And I think that'll help me bend these pieces and then I will try to shape it up to this and then we'll get it on the car. And then I can always come back in and, and spot weld, you know, where I weaken the metal to bend it. So we're gonna give it a go. All right, so we got the metal scored here, and we're just gonna try starting to bend it with these pliers. Well, here's how it turned out. And take a look. There's still a little bit of shaping I have to do, but I think that's gonna be a pretty darn good fit. I think what I'm going to do is uh, weld it, tack it in along here, and then adjust this edge. Well, make sure obviously it's level along this plane. Um, tack it in here, and then make sure this edge lines up, tack that in, then make sure this edge lines up, tack that in, and then go from there. Fabrication is underway. This is level straight across. It's kind of hard to tell right now because we got some welds here, but uh, what I'm doing is I just started tacking it. I tacked it up here uh, in the back corner and then just made sure that this plane was level and then tacked there. And then just use these, these clamps to, I mean, I got this bent close cause I didn't want to, I didn't want to clamp it and have tension on it. So I got a, this bent, you know, got this bent this way to make sure that this was um, lined up so there wasn't tension. And then I just used the clamps to, to hold everything together and just started tacking down a little. Well guys, we're doing all right. Here it is so far. I already came through and ground down the welds once and then came back in and put some more spot welds on. Everything lines up, is parallel, it's looking good. I want to point out that I only fabricated the trunk brace up to about here because right now I'm only worried about um, completing the fabrication for the inside of the trunk here. Once this is complete, um, I will then address finishing the fabrication of the trunk brace. Am I happy that I didn't go out and buy a trunk brace? Um, yes, for the simple fact that I've learned a lot just through doing this little bit of fabrication. 
but I can see why it makes more sense if you can to just buy the pieces um, when you can and, and weld them in and everything because it will definitely save you time and with the amount of time you put into fabricating I'm not sure you're much further ahead you know as far as saving money goes by fabricating stuff yourself but for the experience and the education I got then yeah this was well worth it so if you remember I cut out all of these sections here to fabricate this corner of the trunk floor well this is where the gas tank sits down in and this is the first piece I did piece A and you can see that those are going to come along nicely I mean there's a little bit of a dip here but you know I'll make sure that this is all treated and taken care of so I am incredibly happy with how things are going this evening and my first experience with doing metal fab um, I honestly didn't expect it to go this well I think this project's gonna go pretty smoothly for the most part fingers crossed I probably shouldn't have said that but um, I can tell you of all the things I've done on the car so far this by far has been the most fun for me um, I think the sheet metal work and the welding and all that stuff is really going to be like my happy place with this project. So, you know, when you think about it that way, I've got a lot of fun to look forward to with this car. But this has been, it's been awesome. Um, again, another week I didn't get a cool car segment in, but uh, I was really, really excited about getting in here and getting this done so I could get this into this episode because I really wanted to have Metal Fab in this episode and I was excited to see how it went and share it with you guys. So I'm gonna work those back in, I'm getting there. And I don't know if I'm gonna do a cool car segment uh, this week or not. I might drop this for a while so I can get more of this work in and include more stuff in the episodes. But I will have an episode up at some point next week. So until then guys, take care.